Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Hey coach, my gym only has a 7 inch and a 12 inch box. On box squats, I can hit just about parallel with the 12 inch box. Which box should I use? Oh, good question. Well, if you want to do parallel, it's right about parallel, then do the 12 inch box. If you want to go deeper, you have options. Okay, and a lot of people don't think of this. They have fixed boxes, right? Sometimes at a gym, they don't have a bunch of ways to stack. They don't have the Eva foam uh, mats like I use and everything and like a lot of my clients use. But you know you can stack plates on top of the smaller boxes, right? Or under them. So if you need to turn the seven inch box into a nine inch box, right? Let's say you're right at parallel, but you want to go three inches below. You put a two inch plate on top of that box. You could put it under it also if it'll balance it correctly. Okay. If you need to make it a 10 inch box, well, put a two inch plate under it and go find one of those little thin one inch bumpers or something. See what you've got at your gym and stick it on top of it. Okay, now you have a 10 inch box. See how easy that is? You just have to be creative, guys. Be creative. Uh, and a lot of my lifters have to do this. You know, they have boxes of a fixed height. And ideally, you, you want boxes that are too short because we can always add. We can't take away. So there are ways to do these things. You just have to be creative. And here's what I'm going to say. A parallel box is a good starting point, right? It's a good starting point. But keep in mind, that's going to change depending upon what stance you use. Okay, it's going to change. A wide stance, like if, if you're doing, say, uh, a certain stance it's not as wide as you can possibly go but fairly wide and it's parallel on a 12 inch box when you go wider it's going to be above parallel on the same box right 12 inch box when you go really narrow you're going to be below parallel so if you go to shoulder width right what happens when you hit the box you're going to be a couple inches below parallel now okay so it really matters what stance width you use it matters a lot so Instead of getting stuck with just the fixed boxes that you have, think in terms of what can I do to change the height of these boxes as necessary. Hey, what can I do? And even what some of my, my lifters do who have a fixed box at home, let's say they have a box that they need to make a one inch shorter. Well, they just put down one inch of mat or board in front of the box right there where they, they walk it out. And then now, now because they're on a one inch plank in front of them standing on it, they've now made their box and then shorter. Okay, be creative, adapt. All right, next question. Since gaining more muscle up to a certain point is beneficial to health, does that mean that there is a low enough dosage of gear for people who do not have a low T that can improve health? Oh man, we are stepping into a very deep, very nuanced quagmire with this one. Uh, my personal opinion versus what I could probably say for liability purposes. Oh man, I'm going to say there are a lot of people who, yes, technically their blood work and their health might improve on a low supraphysiological dose of testosterone. Mmm, I said it. However, there are other people who their blood work's going to look worse. Hey, okay, here's what you need to look at. What's your hemocrite levels look like? red blood cell count, what your lipid profiles look like, what your blood pressure look like. If those things are being impacted negatively uh, outside of the healthy range by a low dose of testosterone, then it's not helping your health. If they are staying normal, but it is helping you gain muscle mass, which will therefore increase insulin sensitivity, increase quality of life, increase recovery, mood, Right? Mood matters for health. Uh, I think we could make the case that there is some health improvement. Definitely a quality of life improvement. But here's the problem with this. It is very, very individual. Okay? And if you don't get consistent blood work, you really have no way of knowing. You have no way of knowing. Right? You're just guessing. So that's, that's the conundrum we run into with it. You know, again, my, my personal opinion, I don't believe it's unhealthy to, to do these things in moderation for people who have otherwise healthy lifestyles. 
okay? And that's the kicker, who also don't have pre-existing conditions that could be impacted. So uh, it's, it's a very nuanced topic. It's a very complex topic. And a lot of people would, would be horrified that I even said what I said. And that's okay. It's purely my opinion based upon my experience around these things. In, in my experience, the, the majority of people who use these things are in very good health, even at older age. I have met many guys in their 50s and 60s who use stuff for 30, 40 years who were in perfect health. I've, I've met a lot of them. However, how much were they using? Did they have good, healthy lifestyles and diets? Okay, that's the problem. Versus people who are using such excessive amounts of things that they're dropping dead in their 20s. Um, and granted, there's a vast difference between the two. So big difference between the two. And again, no one wants to hear that. A lot of people don't want to hear that one. Also, when I use the term, and many people use that term, use versus abuse, there are people who jump up and say any use is abuse. Mm, that's not necessarily true, though. That's also your opinion. It's just your opinion, man. Just like what I gave is an opinion. It's not really based on anything, is it? You just believe that without really knowing anything. It's an attitude that you have might be culturally ingrained. I don't have all the answers there. And so, you know, I would say that it, it would really depend. It would depend a lot on the individual person and what your health markers look like in your lifestyle. I don't know what the correct answer is. All right, next question. And this is from my bro, Corey. Ideal foot placement when doing glute bridges. All right. Uh... I'm going to say not too wide. You probably should not be wider than shoulder width. You start going too wide, it just puts a lot of stress on the hip joint. Okay. Keep it into a fairly close stance, shoulder width or, or closer. That's the smaller one. What's the, what's the big important one? How close you get to your glutes. All right. The closer you can keep your heels to your glutes, the better. Now, that will oftentimes require you resetting in the middle of a rep like you see, I see me often do when I'm going heavy. Sure, if I had 315 on there, it wouldn't be a problem. Start getting up above 400, above 500 for your rep work. Feet start sliding. You slide, actually, when you get to the top. It slides you down, and therefore your feet start sliding further away from your glutes because it pushes you against the floor, right? Pushes your torso further back with the reps. you got to reset a little bit. Uh, so why is that the appropriate position? Because the further, the further your feet get away from your glutes, not only is it reducing range of motion, which is the lesser problem, it's the fact that it puts more stress on your low back. You're far more likely to strain your low back when your feet are further away. It puts more stress on it. It's more likely to hurt. Okay, that's it. So try to get those feet in real close and keep them there. And if you have to reset and readjust in the middle of the set because you slide a little bit, your torso does it when you get to the top of the reps, then reset to keep them there. And you'll notice the difference when you chest it in really close versus further, you're letting it even slide two, three, four inches further away. You'll feel the difference in your low back on those reps. It's very noticeable. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.